So here is the 113.30, right? Here's the 113.30, 113 level. Uh, traded all the way down, uh, you know, traded all the way down uh, into the 11s. Uh, I think it's coming into a very, very important level very, very shortly on 50 day moving average. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Happy hump day everybody. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Amazing how this week is actually uh, really flying by. Um, a lot of times you get really, really slow methodical weeks. And again, it doesn't really uh, talk about the good nature of the action, just some Weeks drag, and this one I, you know, I looked up. It's already uh, Thursday. Maybe it's just the the idea that football is here. You have something to look for, forward to Mondays and Thursdays. It kind of passes the time, which is uh, actually really cool. So uh, let's talk about the tape today. Uh, very very uh, aggressive action uh, at the open today. Uh, a lot of value literally at the open. We identified a lot of the beta names that did very very well. But I, again, I, we'll talk about the pivots in a second. But I, I want to give everybody a very clean indication of what is happening right here at the close. So number one, uh, today was a Fed day. Again, very, very aggressive blitz at the open, a lot of beta names, market dried up, uh, everybody was waiting for the Fed. Uh, nothing really earth shattering. Again, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and try to dissect every single line uh, of the Fed statement. You know, again, 30 million sites for that. Um, but the moral of the story is, again, they sold off the market. The more important than that, is where the levels they sold off from. So, so for the last several days, uh, we've been talking about this 34.25 level on, on the S&P, right? This is a, was a triple top until today. Uh, we try to get through it, again, rejected at the same level. Uh, and again, every single time that we re get rejected at the same level, next day follows some pretty aggressive selling. So it, it's something that we need to put in your mind. Again, is this something that uh, you should turn around, you know, listening to this broadcast, sell everything pre you know, after hours? Of course not. Absolutely not. It's not the way the market works. But again, it's something for us to be really, really conscious for tomorrow. And if you look at the QQQs, you're kind of looking at the same thing. Although they didn't get rejected um, at the top of the channel here, they did get rejected at the 10-day moving average. Again, why is the 10-day moving average important? Well, the five-day moving average, at least for me, is a short-term sentiment. If you've watched this broadcast kind of over and over and followed throughout the years, you kind of know that's the shortest-term sentiment. The green, right, this little green candle, a green line we see, that's the 10-day. The 10-day for me is the birth of the trade. So uh, sentiment on the five, birth of the trade of the 10. So if we get rejected, okay, if we get rejected at the 10 and start rolling over, that is a problem. So you, you couple that uh, with the S&P rejection at the top of the channel, and now we're sitting right on the five day. And again, if you believe in the theory that the five day moving average, the shortest term sentiment, well again, tomorrow, again, we have to be aware of what's happening. This area here, this double bottom for now, right? Uh, this 274 and a half, 274 level, this is kind of the, a very, very small line in the sand. Why is that important? Well, because if we lose the five day moving average, then we will test the bottom of the channel. Again, stocks just don't stop randomly. They trade from, right, supply to supply to supply to supply to supply and demand to demand to demand to demand to demand. And if you guys remember last week when we lost the 50 day moving average, again, we had this really aggressive sell off uh, really aggressive sell-off towards lunchtime, and this it's very, very rare that you see a four or five dollar sell-off on the queues, but that's exactly what we're happening for. So again, we're not trying to, you know, we're not trying to uh, put the fear of God on anybody. It's not what it's about. It's not fear mongering. It's not, uh, you know, I have no agenda. The, the market has no bias. Okay, the market goes up, the market goes down. Uh, we say this all the time. You know, don't fall in love with your individual stocks. They don't love you back. They're individual vehicles. When they're strong and technicals get um, confirmed to the upside, they go higher. The same stocks, they do the, the opposite. When, when, when demand zones uh, get attacked and they hold and then they confirm later, they will go lower. Just again, just so you can see on every single area of any random chart that you push up. So tomorrow is going to be very, very important to the bulls. What's even more important than that, okay, uh, and again, I, you know, I, I'm very, very, it's pretty obvious 
which way you know there's a bias for tomorrow. Uh, but even more important than that is the non-participation. A lot of the beta names that we've been talking about now for weeks, okay, uh, Amazon has really not participated. Okay, this is for a very long time. Facebook, for the majority of time, has not participated. Uh, NVIDIA, even with its really strong, aggressive run-up, okay, uh, after they came out with the SoftBank news, the stock was sold. Uh, Apple, after the, the event, again, nothing earth-shattering. It's coming up to a big line in the sand. So far, and so far, and so far. So again, it's very, very important to understand. These are speculation money flow. They represent the feel-good stocks, the investor sentiment. So if they started going lower before the index is cracked, they're going to be the ones that are going to be aggressively impacted if we start taking out technical damage. And that's very, very important. Again, we're not talking about Armageddon. I, I want, because I, I understand there's a lot of newer traders will leave this broadcast. Shut up, Dan. My stock is invincible. It'll never go down. Okay. You're a dime your dance floor. But the reality is when technicals do confirm, usually bad things are going to happen. So before we jump out of the airplane or before we start calling everybody names, let's look at it realistically. Okay. Stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand. We have curtain levels that we have to hold if you are a perma bull. Uh, the 74 level on the queues is a must. Any close under uh, any close under 271 on the queues is very, very bearish. Any confirmation below 277 on the queues, you have a superior probability that we'll test the bottom of this channel here at 262. So those are the levels, right? Again, it's not about being right. We could turn around tomorrow, have a gap and go day, and everything that we're talking about is complete mood point. But again, you deserve to know the levels. You deserve to be prepared because if these levels do get violated, bad things are going to happen. Again, your stock is not Teflon. You could own the greatest stock in the world with the greatest technology in the world. It solves cureness. It cures blindness. Uh, it makes you better looking, right? It, it gives you three inches on your penis, all that good stuff. But if it gets confirmed to the downside, it's not going to be a left alone. It will be taken down like everything else. So again, it's not about being right or wrong. It's being prepared. And if you don't watch those levels or completely just say, ah, I don't care what this guy says, that's fine. But you have to also understand what could be happening next. So again, pretty clean sign of what I think is going to happen. Uh, again, I am not, um, you know, I'm not anticipating this move tomorrow. Um, there's very, very specific levels, and we'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about the Twitter feed in a second, uh, some of the pivots in, in a second, what's kind of setting up for tomorrow. But you can see if these things do get confirmed tomorrow, uh, right? If, they, if, the, if the bottom channels do get confirmed, we're going to get lower prices. The, the, again, there's just certain things uh, in trading. There is no room for anticipation. You could, you know, you could have an argument with somebody on social media to your your head falls off. A company's good, a company's bad, but again, price action is all that matters. I'm an idiot, you're an idiot, everybody's an idiot. We're just trying to figure out the safest way to operate when technical channels get confirmed. So uh, let's talk about the channels for today. Um, again, really aggressive action at the open. Okay, a lot of these names uh, we talked about last night in the video, uh, Baidu, uh, we talked about DDOG getting upgraded, 95 calls. Uh, very, very aggressively. So we started seeing very, very aggressive action right at the open. Roku as well. Um, big moves, like really, really big mo open. And things started kind of going quiet for the next two hours, around 11, 1130. Uh, everybody was waiting for the Fed. Fed, you know, didn't really say a whole lot. Market went up, market went down, market went up, market went down. And things started getting interesting. So let's talk about this now. So Baidu, um, I traded some Baidu. Again, not a big move. Uh, 126 needs to build. I thought it was going to be a bigger move and it did. Uh, unfortunately, it only ran up like, like 75 cents or so. So here is the opening channel, right? So here is the opening channel right over here, right? This whole opening channel here at 126. So it gets above 26. I mean, it traded to 27, but nothing, nothing spectacular. It never made that really, really aggressive move that a lot of these... Uh, beta names go, and we'll talk about you know we'll talk about Roku um, and um, you know BYND in a second. But again, Baidu has really started you know really been a lackluster animal for now a couple of years, and it's really not uh, on my you know on my radar. But again, I really like that setup from yesterday. I took the trade, you know, made some money, but again, not nothing big, nothing big at all there. Uh, Roku again continues to be an absolute monster. Uh, we talked about last night on the video. Remember yesterday we talked about stopped seventy and a half twice, right? 
So it stopped 70 and a half twice, right? So here's, here was 70 and a half we talked about last night. 70 and a half, 70 and a half. Uh, it broke that 71 area, went right to 74. I still like it. Like if the market holds up, obviously there's a lot of airspace left. But again, don't be fooled. Again, the strongest stocks, they will get pulled if everything gets pulled. Remember, these things trade as a tribe. If one goes down, they all go down. So be very, very conscious of that. But again, big move on Roku. Uh, Beyond, again, continues to be just an absolute monster. Uh, 150 needs to reclaim. Uh, here was Beyond, right? So here was Beyond. Uh, takes out the 150, a big, big move here uh, to the 158.60 area. Again, big aggressive call buyers coming in for the weeklies, 160s. We saw the October 180s uh, being traded as well. So again, they like Baidu. And again, it's not that far away uh, from its 52-week high. So again, they love those meatless meatballs, baby. They love those meatless meatballs. That's what she said. Uh, DDOG, uh, this was actually my first trade of the day, DDOG. Uh, they, again, we highlighted this last night. Uh, October call buyers coming in for the 95s. Uh, they got upgraded last night. Uh, 90, 80, 91 needs to build. I actually got long this thing at 90. And the reason why they opened it up, uh, excuse me, they opened it below $90. And this is the macro number right here, this 89.50 level. So when it confirmed that 90, you know, I got long. Uh, it, went, it went to almost 93, a really nice move there. I was actually very, very surprised how fluid it moved, but really nice move on uh, DDOG. So again, here's the first area here. You know, we put this on the feed. Uh, APPS, monster move, okay? I missed this trade. I was looking at other things, uh, but APPS was a, actually a huge move here. 29.75.30 uh, needs to build. Congratulations for all you guys who did catch this thing. I did not trade this thing. Uh, it took out this 29.75.30 level, literally traded at the high of the day, uh, 32 and a half. So really, really aggressive move on uh, APPS. So again, you know, big, you know, big open, really, really big open. Uh, here was Baidu, uh, 127 on deck, you know, big monster move on, on by, uh, BYND. Um, I still like Tesla. I don't think, I don't think Tesla will, um, I don't think Tesla will do one thing or another until closer to the battery event. Uh, it's a very, very aggressive uh, event. Uh, again, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people uh, are loving this potential uh, for the battery. And that's cool. Okay. That's really, really cool. But it, again, I, I like the fact that it, it pretty much, you know, again, even though it was down eight bucks today, it was a rest day. It was an inside day. It didn't take out the low. It didn't take out the, ha uh, the high. And if you look at, uh, if you look at the 60 minute view, right? If you look at the 60 minute view, it's kind of trapped in this channel here. Uh, it got rejected twice off this uh, 458 level, but the moral of the story is they just couldn't push it down. So if he could get one more day, right? If you could get one more day of consolidation, I have to believe that closer to the event, especially Friday, we continuously seeing uh, 475, 480, 490, 500 weekly call buyers uh, coming in. So if it could give, if it could just not give up uh, this this rising wedge for the next day or so, we might get a you know we might get some sort of activity to the upside. Uh, by Friday, especially during uh, weekly expiration. So I still want to, I still definitely watching this channel here. It just has to clear out uh, this top of the channel for the next leg up. So I definitely want to keep an eye on that. And then things got very, very, you know, you could see it in the names. You could see names that got very, very tired. Okay. Uh, Apple, again, uh, got sold off because of the event yesterday. Again, there wasn't anything really earth shattering. A lot of cool things. They talked about a lot of health gadgets, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's cool. Everybody has an iPhone. Everybody has an iPad. Everybody has a MacBook. Okay, cool. Moral of the story is, again, it got sold off. Um, so Apple, uh, 113, 30, 113, if it builds below, can flush. Again, the size buyers were coming in uh, this morning in the October 1250s. And then we started seeing weekly 110 put buyers, which was very, very important. So here was Apple. Uh, you know, it held up initially, right? Uh, it held up initially. And again, I apologize. Uh, the Apple, Apple and Tesla charts, for some reason on the 60 minute, have not adjusted uh, for, for e signal uh, after the split. So I apologize. It's a little annoying for me as well. So here is the 113.30, right? Here's the 113.30, 113 level. Uh, traded all the way down, uh, you know, traded all the way down. Uh, into the 11s. Uh, I think it's coming into a very, very important level very, very shortly on the 50-day moving average. That will be the line of the sand that we have to watch for the next couple of days. And then things started getting really, really weak, and it was more important on names like Shop and Amazon. 
they lost not only the day's ranges, they lost last week's ranges, which is very, very negative macro-wise. If you look at shop uh, 895, 894, if it builds below, can flush. Here was shop, right? So it lost, right? So it lost the 895, 894 level. Uh, traded pretty much at the low of the day, closer than 50 cents at the low of the day at 885. If this rising wedge gets lost tomorrow, there's a lot of room down, guys. So be very, very careful if you are uh, long, uh, if you are long shop, and obviously for all you guys who are taking it to the other side of the equation, uh, there's a definitely pivot to the downside. Uh, same thing with, a with Amazon. I actually been tweeting this out for like, you know, for weeks now. What the hell is wrong with this thing, right? And I, I, I even joke around. I go, does this, this, this Amazon have COVID? It's been sick for weeks. Again, here is the pivot, right? Here is the pivot this afternoon. Uh, th 3107, if it builds below, can flush. So not only did it take out the 3107, it took out the previous week's low of 3083 and it closed right at 3078, guys. If this thing starts to confirm down and there's an aggressive macro rug pull tomorrow, guys, look at much room you have. You have room initially to 3033 and then you have room to 2977. Again, these are the facts. I'm not saying anything bad about the company. Uh, stocks go up, stocks go down. Amazon and Apple, the greatest two stocks in the world, they control the universe. But again, if you're on the wrong side of the pivot, when it confirms price actions is all that matters. So definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, too low is actually a pretty decent move. Uh, I didn't trade this thing. It was a little too thin for me. Uh, 231.80, 232 needs to build too, way too thin, way too thin of a trader for me. Uh, but it gave a nice little pop, right? It gave a nice little pop. Here's the 32. It popped right to the 34 and a half level. And again, got rejected the 10 day moving average just the same way uh, the Qs did. Um, and that's it. And that's it. So and here's kind of the option flow for the day. So again, uh, my plan for tomorrow, obviously anything uh, that is at the bottom of the range, I definitely want to keep an eye out. Uh, preferably, I would love to see a gap up in these stocks, especially names like Apple and Amazon uh, and NVIDIA and Shop, because if they do get stuffed at supply tomorrow and they start going green to red, those ranges are going to be really, really tested very, very quickly. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.